All right. We did sums and differences for sines and cosines. Let's do sums and differences for tangents. So the tangent formula is unfortunately kind of messy. See if I can move this move this uh, thing out of the way so we have room to work. The tangent of x plus y is the tangent of x plus the tangent of y. divided by one minus the tangent of x times the tangent of y. And this is kind of annoying. <laughs> um, you remember how with the cosine, addition turns into subtraction, and then with the sine, addition turns into addition? The tangent mixes those two ideas together. So we have addition here and addition here, but subtraction there. And what happens, I'll just mess around with this video. What happened with, um, with this frame, I mean, rather than copy it all over again, what happens if you turn that addition into subtraction is that the addition on top turns into subtraction, but the subtraction below turns into addition. So the sign up here the sign in the numerator always matches whatever we have here. But then whatever we have down there always fails to match it. And really that the tangent. So let's, um, let's do an example with this formula, just because when we were doing the sine and the sine, both our examples were done using the um, addition formulas. Let's find the tangent of 15 degrees. Bearing in mind that this is a subtraction. 45 degrees minus 30 degrees. So, plug and play. Um, the subtraction will give us subtraction in the top. But addition down here.
So unlike the sine and the cosine, I never suggested that you memorize the tangent of 45 degrees or the tangent of 30 degrees. So before we do anything else, the tangent of 45 degrees is a tangent you actually might end up memorizing because it's so nice. The tangent of 45 degrees is 1. Because it's the sine of 45 over the cosine of 45. And the sine and the cosine are identical. So any number divided by itself is 1. Thirty degrees. I don't know myself. It's something that we have not bothered committing to memory, but we can figure it out. The sine of thirty degrees over the cosine of thirty degrees. One half over the square root of three divided by two is one over the square root of three, which, if you wanted to, you could rewrite as the square root of three over not. 3, just being very sloppy today, I apologize, it's the square root of 3 over 3. So the tangent of 45 degrees is 1. The tangent of 30 degrees is this. Then we have 1 plus the tangent of 45 degrees times the tangent of 30 degrees. And woof, but I guess we really ought to, ought to simplify the phi this um we'll get a common denominator up here and we'll get a common denominator down here And then the three in this denominator and the three in this denominator will cancel. And there is the tangent we were looking for. So, sine, cosine, tangent. Um, there isn't really the equivalent of this for the secant, cosecant, cotangent. By which I mean, I mean, if you have, like, the secant of x, plus y, 
You could certainly re say, well, that's one over the cosine of x plus y. And you could use the cosine identity. Uh, sorry for the, the silence. We get the cosine of x and the cosine of y minus, and then I... Don't really have room, but minus these signs. So, I mean, in this sense, we can rewrite the secant of a sum. But I mean, when we rewrote the cosine of a sum, we got signs and cosines. When we rewrote the sine of a sum, we got signs and cosines. Um, it would be, I mean, the sort of equivalent of that would be if we could take the secant of the sum and rewrite it in terms of secants and cosecants. And we can't do that. There is no way to take this fraction and get secants and cosecants out of it. So people usually think of there as being three sum and difference formulas. One for the sine, one for the cosine, one for the tangent. People don't really think of the secant, cosecant, or cotangent as having sum and difference formulas.